As much as we don't want to imagine it happening, we've likely all had the thought once. Could an asteroid hit us at any moment and wipe us all out? Of course, it can happen, but luckily the odds are in our favor. However, that doesn't mean we shouldn't be prepared. Which is why NASA has, as of April 2019, awarded SpaceX a contract to work with the agency to prepare for the event of a catastrophic asteroid making its way to Earth. And with that information, I decided to dive a little bit deeper into the issue itself and what SpaceX will actually be doing. In this Sci-5, we answer the questions, what are the odds we will be hit by an asteroid? What would happen if an asteroid hit us? Have we had any close calls? How are we monitoring the threat? And what can SpaceX do to help stop it? What are the odds we will be hit by an asteroid? According to NASA, there are currently no asteroids or comets on a collision course with Earth that we know of. This is likely to be the case for the next several hundred years, which leaves us a nice amount of time to prepare. But science is always improving, and as we continue to monitor, we learn more about what we should be looking for and what we're missing. And as we do so, our odds may increase or decrease. This doesn't mean space objects aren't making it to Earth, though. If you've ever been to the rocks and minerals section of a museum, you've likely seen or even felt a piece of a meteorite. So what's the difference? Let's quickly run through some definitions. An asteroid is a large rock body in space that orbits the sun. Meteoroids also orbit the sun, but are much smaller rock objects or particles. This is where things get pretty cool. Our atmosphere, in a way, acts as a protective blanket around Earth. If a meteoroid heads towards Earth and enters Earth's atmosphere, it will vaporize and become a meteor, or what many will call a shooting star. And to throw one more definition at you, if a small asteroid or meteoroid survives the fiery fall through Earth's protective blanket, the atmosphere, and lands on Earth, it becomes a meteorite. And that is what you will have seen in a museum. But what does that have to do with our odds of being hit? Well, when we enter meteoroids into the equation, our odds actually get a bit higher. There are a fair amount of accounts through history in which a meteorite makes its way to Earth, but due to their size, they are not nearly as dangerous as a giant asteroid on course with Earth, or even our moon would be. One somewhat recent example was on February 12, 1947, when 150 tons of fragments of a broken up meteor made it to the Sakote Alin Mountains of eastern Siberia. The biggest fragment was an astonishing 3,839 pounds. This created 102 craters over a 1 by 2 kilometer area. Thankfully, the meteorites didn't hit a populated area, but had they, it could have been quite the damage. According to NASA, some of the larger pieces would have been as if a car suddenly dropped in at supersonic speeds. And here is where we bring odds back into the conversation. Events such as this occur about once per decade. But due to the land to water distribution on Earth, most of these events are never recorded as they land in remote locations such as the ocean, Arctic, or uninhabited lands. And more comforting, in modern times, there have been no recorded deaths due to meteorites. However, there have been some pretty significant events. We'll come back to that shortly. So what would happen if an asteroid hit us? The size of the asteroid matters a lot in this question. So we're going to go based on what scientists have pretty much determined to be a catastrophic size. An asteroid about 10 kilometers across. That's about 6.2 miles. Britt Scharinghausen is an astronomer and professor at Beloit College who got her PhD from Cornell University in 2006. According to her, if an asteroid 10 kilometers across were to hit Earth, it would not matter if it hit in a major city or in the middle of the Siberian tundra. The results would be catastrophic. She explains that the typical meteorite travels at 30 kilometers per second, and at that speed, the atmosphere would not have much of an impact on slowing it down or breaking it up. The meteorite would smash into the Earth's crust. Upon the impact, the asteroid would vaporize along with much of the crust at the site. Some of the debris would bounce back so far it would go into orbit around the Earth, and much more of it would rain down on every part of the world. The chain reaction at this point would cause the atmosphere to heat up to the point where it would feel like you were in the inside of an oven, triggering forest fires and cooking anyone and anything unfortunate enough to be outside. After this, the combination of dust and soot from the impact and the mass fires would blanket the atmosphere for roughly a year or so, blocking out the sunlight and resulting in the death of most plant life on land and in the water. If any animal or human were lucky enough to survive the initial incident, the following years would be full of avoiding death from floods and other environmental disasters caused by the conditions, or a lack of food and resources. 
The asteroid that took out the dinosaurs about 65 million years ago was about 10 to 15 kilometers across, or 6 to 9 miles. Going back to odds, this type of asteroid usually comes to Earth roughly every 50 to 100 million years. Have we had any close calls? As far as catastrophic asteroids go, we've been pretty lucky given that we weren't around 65 million years ago. But that doesn't mean we haven't had any less severe close calls. For instance, a quite famous one is the Tunguska event. On June 30th in 1908, what is assumed to have been a large comet plummeted toward Earth. The comet theory is widely agreed upon due to the large trail of light that followed the object. The comet was about 40 meters in diameter and 15 megatons, and is estimated to have had the energy of the Hiroshima atomic bomb times 1,000. The comet broke up and exploded before reaching the ground in Siberia. The explosion, which occurred about 6 to 10 kilometers above the Earth's surface, caused 2,000 kilometers squared of forest to flatten. The shockwave took out windows kilometers away, and the impact registered on seismic stations all over Eurasia and as far away as Washington, D.C. and Jakarta, Indonesia. There are no confirmed deaths from the incident, but there are two possible. Had the comet landed in a more populous location, this could possibly have taken out an entire city. More recently, in 2013, we had an asteroid that was about 20 meters in diameter came down over Chelyabinsk, Russia. The asteroid broke up in the air on the way down, but the shockwave did shatter windows and caused injuries. Also in 2013, an asteroid 30 meters across that brushed by Earth by about 34,000 kilometers was observed at the Pokova Observatory in Russia. Had it gone toward Earth, it would have caused similar damage to the Tunguska event, and with the population of Earth continuously growing, the odds of landing in a habitable zone continue to rise. NASA also has a list of potentially hazardous asteroids, or PHAs, that they track due to their potential to make a threateningly close approach to Earth. There are currently 586 known PHAs. How are we monitoring the threat? Scientists continue to track and detect as many near-Earth objects as possible, with the notion that studying objects near us would better prepare us to spot ones that may actually be on track to Earth. In a 1992 report to NASA, a coordinated space guard survey was recommended to discover and track potential celestial objects that could hit Earth. In 1998, NASA formally began the initiative, and by 2008, it was estimated that 90% of all near-Earth objects, or NEOs, with diameters of one kilometer or larger that could potentially be a threat, were discovered. Just one year later, in 2009, several NEOs over 2 to 3 kilometers were discovered, showing that there were still many more NEOs that had yet to be detected. And the idea that 90% already were was less credible. In 2005, an act was passed in the United States government declaring that, for the sake of all humanity, it was essential that NASA continue to track NEOs. As a result of this bill, NASA officially began the Near-Earth Objects Survey Program. The European Union has a similar program called NEO Shield. There are also private nonprofits such as the B612 Foundation dedicated to protecting the Earth from the threat. And there are several more initiatives all around the world with the same goal. One of the sites at which we track and identify these objects is in Maui, Hawaii. This is the location of the first Pan-STARRS telescope, also known as the PS1. Under the administration of the University of Hawaii, this telescope went online December 6, 2008. Another that began tracking NEOs is the Minor Planet Center in Cambridge, Massachusetts. This center had been tracking comets and asteroids since 1947. Recently, it was joined by surveys that specialize in locating NEOs, many of these funded by NASA's Near-Earth Object Program Office as a part of their Space Guard program. As far as detection goes, we seem to be taking the threat seriously all around the world, which is great, but what if one really is on course with Earth? NASA did have a redirect mission in development called simply the Asteroid Redirect Mission, but according to the NASA website, this mission was ended by the government under the White House Space Policy Directive 1, issued December 11, 2017. However, they do say many of the central technologies that were in development for the mission will continue, due to the fact they are deemed vital for future human deep space missions. This is where SpaceX comes in. What can SpaceX do to help? For a number of years, NASA has been working on the Double Asteroid Redirection Test, or in short, DART. 
DART is a NASA-directed project that runs through the Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Laboratory with the help from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, Goddard Space Flight Center, and Johnson Space Center. With the help of SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket, DART will be launched into space to blast an asteroid with the hopes of deflecting it into another direction. The strategy being used is what is called a kinetic impactor. This is when you hit the object, in this case the asteroid, with another object that is dense and fast so that it may be able to alter its trajectory to a safe distance from Earth or our moon. This isn't being tested on an actual threatening asteroid, as there is still too much we don't know about the process, such as how an asteroid will even behave if it were to be impacted. Finding out how it will behave is actually why the test is being done. The test will be impacting the moonlet of an asteroid known as Didymos, often referred to as Didymoon. A moonlet is essentially a small moon, and it is not uncommon for a large asteroid to have one. The hope is that by impacting the moonlet at about 6 kilometers per second, the orbit of both the moonlet and the asteroid will be altered. Therefore, if it were on its way to Earth, it would be knocked off course enough to graze by at a safe distance. DART will be launched into space by Falcon 9 rocket in the neighborhood of June 2021. It will reach Didymos and Didymoon around early October 2022, when the system is within range of 11 million kilometers of Earth. At this distance, we will be able to observe the reaction and measure the momentum transferred to the moonlet. It's also possible the asteroid will absorb and dissipate much of the kinetic energy. In that case, scientists will need to find another way to prevent a catastrophic asteroid from impacting Earth. Perhaps lasers. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, check out my last video, Intergalactic Space Travel. How close are we? Also, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications for more videos on all things science and science fiction.